Welcome to Therapy on Thursday. I am Minister Dre with another Care B session entitled, Not a Love TKO, but a Love EKO. Boxing is one of my favorite sports. In the world of boxing, a TKO is defined as a technical knockout. A knockout becomes technical for two reasons. One is when there's been a violation of the rules because someone is fighting dirty. And two, because the boxer is unable to continue, so the fight gets stopped. Teddy Pendergrass sang a song about a love TKO. He wanted to let us know that he fell in love, but instead of love lifting him, love gave him a low blow and knocked him cold out. This doesn't sound like a true love to me, but the truth is that love does have an opponent that fights dirty. Over the last year, the opponent called hate and oppression has been making itself obvious. Talk about fighting dirty. This pandemic has been fighting dirty. This spirit of prejudice has been fighting dirty. The last president we had was downright dirty. But in spite of all that, the good news is that pound for pound, love is still prevailing. As we learned in 1 Corinthians 13, love doesn't fight vicious and love doesn't violate the boundaries of others. Love is not impatient or insensitive. Love does not brag and belittle. Love is not a record player. Love is a reconcile of relationships. Love doesn't just roll with the punches. Love perseveres because love is not emotional. Love is eternal. So like the fight between Muhammad Ali and Ernie Shavers in 1977, love will go the distance. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says that love is the greatest. And because it's the greatest, love is not going for a TKO. Love is going for an EKO, an eternal knockout. Because one day, love will put a stop to all the strife altogether. Revelations 21, 4 says, and there will be no more death, sorrow, crying, or pain. All these things are gone forever. I know there's been some depressing experiences that got you down and out, but I want to encourage you all that what you're going through right now does not have outlast written on it. Listen, Satan will sucker punch you by getting you to think that there's no hope and that struggles will never cease. But come on, tell yourself, trouble don't last always. Tell yourself again, troubles don't last always. Hate may try to outlast, but love is everlasting. The text for our character points is found in Romans 12. Paul says, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Wow, that was a mouthful, but it was the truth. This text gives us a ringside seat to handling hatred God's way because the heart of humans these days is so hateful. How many of y'all know I'm right? But I'm here to tell you that hate is not the heavyweight in this fight. Oh no, God is the heavyweight and hate holds no weight. Love is the greatest because Jesus won it all. He didn't win it all in a boxing competition. He won it all on the cross. Racism may have had us on the ropes, but Jesus still won it all. Police brutality may have hit us below the belt, but Jesus still won, won it all. So saints, don't you dare backpedal when bad situations want to battle because Jesus won it all. So let's celebrate our champion Christ on this Soul Care Thursday. Our text indicates two therapy ways that God has turned our love TKO into a love EKO. Come on, tell yourself, I'm building my hopes on things eternal. First, God has implemented the strategy. Hate always ends in tragedy, but love always begins with strategy. Verse 20 starts off with the word instead, which indicates to me that our opponent hate has a strategy too. But instead of getting even, 
from the hooks and jabs of your haters. Jesus says, if your haters are hungry, feed them. If your haters are thirsty, give them something to drink. This is called paying back an evil tragedy with an eternal strategy, because I think this scripture is more about sharing the gospel with your foe than it is about giving them some food. Because how many of y'all know that people are hungry for love these days? And at the end of the day, the eternal strategy of doing something for your enemy that's external will knock out the enemy that's internal, and that's you. How many of you know that it's World War Me when it comes to turning the other cheek? But though our hater keeps throwing that uppercut, God is expecting us to keep it clean. God is expecting us to keep it clean because he has an eternal strategy for this main event. God wants humanity to be set free from all the fury and focus on the fact that we are all forgiven. Come on, tell yourself, I'm forgiven. This strategy was implemented when Christ went toe to toe with sin, my God, when he gave his life on the cross. Satan thought Jesus was the underdog in this fight, but Jesus showed Satan that he was under his feet. I know that's right. <laughs> Matthew 22, 44 says that God said, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under my feet. So when your opponent opposes you, go straight to the strategy by stacking burning coals of shame on their heads. Your undeserved kindness will make them feel ashamed, but at the same time, it will make them aware of the eternal strategy of forgiveness. So remember, EKOs, don't give evil a 10 second count to get back up. Overcome evil by doing good because we want hate to throw in the towel. So God has implemented the strategy. And finally, God has even the score. <laughs> the fight ain't always fair, but it's fixed. God is the promoter of this fight, and he has already declared the winner of this title to be love because love is the greatest. Love wins over hostility and hatred. The pain they cause will not pin us to the mat. Hate will not outpoint love because God is love and he has even the score. Verse 19 says to leave the revenge to the righteous anger of God. I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. My God, our revenge can get ratchet. By the time we get through trashing storefronts and talking smack to the cops for being treated unjustly, we wind up forfeiting the fight. But God's revenge is righteous. His revenge leads people to love. Romans 2, 4 in the Message Bible says, God is kind, but he's not soft. In his kindness, he takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. God is not the challenger in this fight. God is the king in this fight and his revenge is sweet because he saves. So ding, ding, ding. It looks like another love, EKO. God's eternal strategy of forgiveness has knocked out hate from the cross and God has even the score so everyone can receive his love. So it's unanimous, no split decision. Take a seat, Muhammad Ali, because love is the greatest. Come on, let's pray. Father, you are great and your love is the greatest. Help us to remember that we are more than conquerors through our champion, Christ Jesus. You are the promoter of our fights and the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you so much for speaking to us today, God. We love you. We give you praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I pray that you were blessed by our February sessions about love. But the love still continues on this ninth day of our Lenten season because it's not about what we're giving up. It's about us getting up because he got up. But call me if you need me. My number's right there on the screen. But in the meantime, join me next week right here on this couch and we're going to talk some more. God bless you.